This is a lecture for Section 7C, The Law of Large Numbers. The law of large numbers applies to a process for which the probability of an event, A, is P of A, and the results of repeated trials are independent. If the process is repeated through many trials, the proportion of the trials in which event A occurs will be close to the probability of A. The larger the number of trials, the closer the proportion should be to the probability. This is a graph that represents the law of large numbers in rolling a die. If you are going to roll a normal six-sided die, each number should happen one out of six times for a probability of 0.167. So what you're going to see here is this the blue line is the expected probability, depending on the number of rolls. And the red line or the pink line you'll see here is the actual proportion of ones that are rolled. So as you see here at the lower values, you're not quite at that. You may be a little low, then you may go above. But as you repeat this process over and over, a large amount of times, the actual probability gets close to the expected probability. So basically, we know what the probability should be. If you repeat the trial so many times large enough, what actually happens is what you expect to happen. A roulette wheel has 38 numbers. There are 18 that are black, 18 that are red, and then the numbers zero and double zero are in green. On the roulette wheel, each space is equally sized. So we can assume that all possible outcomes for those 38 numbers are going to have an equal probability. So we could then ask the question, what is the probability of getting a red number on a single spin or on any spin? Well, the probability we get a red is the number of ways red can occur, which is 18 out of the total number of ways, 38 or about 0.474 of the times. If patrons were then in a casino and spun that wheel 100,000 times, about how many times would red be the outcome? Now we're going to use that whole expected value. We can expect red to happen 0.474 of the time or about 47% of the time. So we can take that probability and times it by the number of times that the act was done and get a rough estimate of how many reds we would expect to have happen. So if we take 0.474 and times it by 100,000, we would get up with, we should get about 47,400 reds out of all 100,000 spins. We do need to remember that this is what actually happens may still be slightly off and not the exact value that we expect. But if we continue this process over even a longer amount of time, it should tend towards that expected value. This leads to the concept of expected value. Let's say we have two events, each with its own value and probability. Well, we can find the overall expected value by taking the first event's value times its probability and adding that to the second event's value and times it by its probability. And we could expand that to three events, four events, five events, however many we have, we could find the overall expected value of some situation. A common example with expected value is in insurance. Suppose an automobile insurance company sells an insurance policy with an annual premium of $200. Based on data from past clients, the company has calculated the following probabilities. About one in 50 will file a claim of $2,000. One in 20 will file a claim of $1,000. And one in 10 will file a claim of $500. 
Assuming that the policyholder could file any of the claims above, what is the expected value to the company for each policy that is sold? We will start with the fact that the company makes $200 off of this person. So we start with the income that they are going to make is $200 for this person having this policy. Now, they will have to pay out $2,000 every one out of 50 people. So out money is negative 2,000. So negative 2,000 times its probability, one out of 50. The company will have to pay out $1,000 about one out of 20 times. So paying out money is negative money for them. And then they pay out $500 or negative $500 about one out of 10 times. If you calculate this entire value, the net result is $60 for every single patron that they have or policy holder that they have, they're going to bank $60. So it says here, this suggests that the company sells many policies, the average return on policies is $60. The price of a lottery ticket is $1. There is a 1 in 10 probability you'll win a dollar. A 1 in 50 probability you'll win $5. A 1 out of 500 probability you win $100. And a 1 out of, let's see, that is 1 million probability you'll win $100,000. What is the expected value to you? Well, you buy this dollar lottery ticket. So you are out a dollar to purchase the ticket. You can earn a dollar, so you can gain a dollar, one out of 10 probability, or one out of 10 times. So you take the value times its probability. And then I'm gonna do the next one. You can win $5 one out of 50 times. You can win $100 one out of 500 times. And you can win $100,000 one out of a million times. Four, five, six. So what you will do is you will go into a calculator. You can type this exactly in this whole long string. As long as you're in a scientific calculator like Desmos, you can type that in. And you will get the result of negative... 0.50, which means for every lottery ticket you buy, you roughly lose 50 cents lost per ticket. This is just an image of how you could type this into Desmos to get the previous answer of you're losing 50 cents every time you purchase a lottery ticket. It is estimated that 57% of Americans live in a household with one or two people, 32% with three or four people, and 11% live with five or more. Using one and a half for the expected number of people in a household with one to two people, three and a half for the households with three to four people, and six for a household of five or more, Find the expected number of people in an American household. So we, for one or two people, we're using the value of 1.5. So 1.5 happens 57% of the time. 0.57 is 57%. And then we've got three or four we're representing with 3.5. And that happens 32% of the time, so 0.32. And then 11% for five or more, it says we're going to use six for that value. So six happens 11% of the time. Again, if I type this into a calculator, you should get roughly about 2.6 people. So we would say on average, or the expected number of people we would find in an American household will be somewhere between two to three people living in the house on average.
one thing that can happen, as we know in real life, is that what we expect to happen doesn't. So there is this concept called the gambler's fallacy. And it's the mistaken belief that after a streak of bad luck, someone is due for a streak of good luck. Looking at this example here, suppose you are playing the coin toss game in which you win a dollar for a head and lose a dollar for a tail. After 100 tosses, you are $10 in the hole because you've flipped 45 heads and 55 tails. So you decide to keep playing the game. You continue playing until you've tossed the coin a thousand times, at which point you've now gotten 48 heads, sorry, 480 heads and 520 tails. Does the result agree with the law of large numbers and have you gained back any of your losses? After your first 100 tosses, you had 45% heads. When you get to 1,000 tosses, you've gotten 480 out of 1,000, which is now close, or which is now 48%, which is getting closer and closer to that average 50%. We know that's going to agree with a lot of large numbers because the goal is as you go it, more and more trials, your results should get closer to what we expect. So that first part is correct. We do follow the law of large numbers. Now, at this first point, you were down $10. However, after you've tossed a thousand, you gained $480, but lost $520. So in the end, if you have plus 480 and minus 520, you are now down $40 total when you originally were only $10 down. So your losses increased. They did not decrease. Despite getting closer to that 50-50 chance, we were still on the lower side of heads and we did not gain back that money we did not hit a winning streak and we are still in the hole. Another thing to realize as far as the gambler's fallacy is that the streaks that can happen end up having the same probability. If you toss a coin six times, the outcome of head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, shown here, and all heads are equally likely because every single event you throw here, a head or a tail, is a one half. And whether it's head or a tail, you're gonna take one half times itself six times. All the different streaks that you get in there are the same chance of occurring. So let's say you toss a coin a thousand times and record the results. You then look through the results where you listed H, T, T, H, whatever you listed, whatever you got, you put an H or a T. You look through the results and find that at one point you got 10 heads in a row. First question, what is the probability of getting 10 heads in 10 tosses? And should you be surprised to find this streak in your 1,000 tosses? So if we get all heads 10 times, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 heads. The probability of getting ahead every time I flip the coin is one half. So for 10 in a row, that's one half listed 10 times that I'm going to multiply all together. So if I multiply all those together, that ends up giving me one over 1,024. So this is the probability here of 10 heads in a row. It's actually the same probability of getting any combination of heads and tails. So should you be surprised that you find this in your streak? No, I shouldn't be surprised. Because 
because the chance that it happens is one out of just above a thousand. So one out of 1,024, I should expect that to happen. It's very close to one out of a thousand. That, that is very likely to happen in 10, in a thousand flips of a coin. Yet another example, a farmer knows that at this time of year, in his part of the country, the probability of rain on any given day is 50%. It hasn't rained in 10 days and he needs to decide whether to start irrigating. Is he justified in postponing irrigation just because he's due for a rainy day? The answer is clearly going to be no. He's not due for a rainy day. Each day is independent of the next, and whether it rains or not has nothing to do with what has happened before that. We understand that maybe 10 days in a row of no rain may be unexpected or be considered like a losing streak, but we know that it can happen. Weather can have a mind of its own, and you can go through these dry patches, and you can go through wet patches, it can happen. The next day's chance of rain is 50%. If it doesn't rain again today, the next day's chance of rain is 50%. It doesn't change. The region is not due for rain. It is just a matter of what the weather happens to do on that day. One thing to know, anytime you go to the casino, or gambling houses, so they always have games set up so that the house always has a higher probability of winning than a patron. For any particular game, we can find the house edge or what is called the expected value to the house for every individual bet. Going back to the game of roulette, Remembering there's 18 red, 18 black, and two green spaces. The betting that is made in roulette says if you bet on red, it's called a one-to-one -one bet. That means if you bet $10 and you land on red, you get your $10. If you bet $10 and it does not land on red, you lose your $10. So the same amount of money that you bet is what you could win back. We want to find the house edge for a bet on red. So looking at it right here, if a patron bets on red, that's 18, uh, 18 chances of getting a red space. But you as the casino not getting red, there's actually 20 spaces. So you already know that you have a better chance here because you have two more spaces than the patron does. Okay, so we are doing this from the casino side. <clears throat> if you are the casino and the ball lands in red, you are going to pay out the bet. So you will lose that dollar on red. And that is 18 out of, there were 38 spaces. Now, if it lands on something not red, you as the casino make the money. And we know that happens 20 places because black and green combine to make not red. So if I take negative one times 18 out of 38 plus one times 20 out of 38, and I type that in my Desmos calculator, you're gonna get 0 0.053. Now, money, we go to two decimal places. So 0 0.05 is five cents. Basically, what that means is for every bet on red that happens in a casino, the house should net five cents. So in the end, over all of the times people bet on red, for expected value because of the law of large numbers and what we it will happen as we do this process over and over again, the house is still going to be ahead. You may, as one patron, come out with more money than you left with, 
or then you started with. But then there's those other patrons that are going to leave where they lost everything that they bet. So in the end, the house is always going to have the advantage for any casino game. 